According to the nonprofit West Health, according to the nonprofit West Health, an estimated 112 million, or 44 percent, American adults are struggling to pay for health care, and more than double that number, 93 percent, feel that what they do pay is not worth the cost. Cost for health care for Americans. I'm choosing to go to. Let me see now, Dustin. I'm Anthony. And I'm Santiago Morales. Thus, we seek to answer the question to what extent has the cost of healthcare affected the health of adults in the US in the past two decades? Well, to answer this question, um, in the past two decades, the increasing cost of healthcare has, effect, has a negative effect on adults today. As we can see by the graph and health subsidies by major category, the US has spent $1.5 trillion or 7.9% of GDP. It's estimated that in 2028, it will increase to $2.9 trillion, or 9.7% of GDP. This thing come to show that the US adult citizens have had a negative impact because the US has not been giving them enough funding so that they could lower down the cost of healthcare and all that. Furthermore, we can see that the US spent $4.1 trillion in healthcare in 2020, but where did it go? We can see that most of it was spent on hospital care. It was $1,270, or 30.8% of the whole thing. This includes like taking care of the hospital, uh, paying the staff, prescription drugs, uh, machines in, for OR, stuff like that. And the second one is physician services. We can see that this is basically where you go to a doctor to get diagnostic or um, prescription drugs in case you don't feel well. This also shows that the government is just not giving enough funding and it's impacting the US in a negative way because they have a toll to deal with when it comes to the price they have to pay. All right, this following graph by Kim Noray, a graduate with a PhD in economics, shows the proportion of annual household income compared to the country of South Korea. As you can see, the US has twice the amount of catastrophic out-of-pocket spending, which means over 50% of household annual income is spent on medical aid or need. The U.S. also has three times the amount of average healthcare spending as well compared to South Korea. And then the U.S. also great, uh, is greater than the 10 to 50 percent of annual household income spent as well. The main cause of this is the high expenditure that the U.S. does compared to South Korea. This is a potential cause of this is the inefficient and outdated ways of caring, managing, and treating these outdated diseases. This next graph by activevote.com shows the GDP and per capita cost per person for between the United States and other developed countries. The US is significantly in the lead with 17.2% compared to the other developed countries of France and Switzerland. This, this amounts to a $3,000 per person gap in health spending between the US and Switzerland. This is significant as each person spends over $3,000 more than the average person in Switzerland or France. The impacts of cost of healthcare also impact Americans by affecting their decision making. According to Dr. Kevin Wald, an expert in behavioral economics, people make the healthcare decision based off healthcare costs. Americans may choose to forego their healthcare treatment or plan if they feel like it costs too much. As you can see on this graph, 33% of adults have not gotten a medical test or treatment that was recommended by a doctor because of its cost. And 43% of adults also put off a medical appointment or treatment because they did not want to pay the insurance bill. And then secondly, this is markedly higher in the uninsured, which 37 and 48% respectively um, do not want to pay insurance. And then also, this is also higher in the uninsured with the 60%. According to a study by Dr. Pandurji at Oregon Health, patients with synesthesia and uh, opt out to, out of medical treatment in order to save costs. And the harm uh, can be the harm can be that patients do not receive the medical aid they need, which can cause to further negative health to uh, further negative health and can cause serious damage. Cost 
so that they can afford their medicines. And this chart from the source by Dr. Um, Yusuf Zafar shows the results from the survey of cancer patients. And um, a majority of the full cohort of 254 respondents altered their lifestyle by um, by uh, obtaining by uh, reducing spending on their leisure activities like vacations and eating out with movies, and the majority also obtained their samples from the doctor. And these are reasonable measures um, for as a coping me mechanism. However, a large portion of cancer patients also resorted to more extreme actions. For example, 12% of cancer patients worked more hours despite being sick with cancer, and a large portion also did not fill their prescription drugs, which could impact their cancer treatment and health. And it's also important to note that many cancer patients had family members that worked more hours, which goes to show that the high cost of healthcare impacts more than just the cancer patients. And um, Dr. Yusuf Jafar at the Duke Cancer Institute and his colleagues also describe financial toxicity as the negative financial impacts that come from high cost of cancer treatment. Um, this definition of financial toxicity can also be applied to people with other diseases. However, it is the focus of Dr. Dr. Zafar's paper because the cost of cancer treatment and the number of cancer patients has been rising at an alarming rate in the past 20 years. And then that's why they employed the cost coping strategies just mentioned. And the effects of financial toxicity can also be reflected in mental health. Those who are unable to pay their um, medical bills as represented by this dark line are more than two thirds more likely to um, miss to suffer from at least one day of mental health symptoms than those who are able to pay. And this makes sense because being faced with an, ex an expensive health condition while having limited financial capital forces people to make difficult decisions regarding their health and ration their resources. So in short, high cost of health care prevents many Americans from receiving any or adequate care. And those who do end up paying suffer from financial toxicity. Both groups may suffer mental distress and worse general health. Technological advances and the transitioning to the usage of technology in healthcare has greatly benefited doctors and patients. On April 6, 2022, a report by the BMT Health Services Research conducted 11 interviews with patients who received remote monitoring at home during the COVID-19 outbreak. As you can see here, it, uh, remote monitoring at home not only helped doctors get more updates on patient conditions, it also was easier to schedule and gave a lot less of a workload to the doctors in hospital and could not be a problem with, uh, could not have a problem with carrying capacity. Our second solution is the triple aim. The triple aim is a, an initiative started by the International, sorry, by the Institute of Healthcare Improvement. And it seeks to improve three main goals. Firstly, population health, which generally talks about why the patients have gone into the hospital in the first place and what society can do to prevent that. Per capita cost, which is the individual, uh, individual cost that each patient has to pay. And experience of care, which is the, the general efficiency of the healthcare actually given. One of, the prob one of the main limitations, however, of the triple aim is that it's an old initiative dating back to 2009, which causes problems to try to motivate the people to get this initiative going again, given that it's been such a long time since it has begun. Not only that, but it's hard to prove an actual impact given that there are so many variables that affect healthcare costs today. A uh, limitation with technology is that it, you are, the doctors are not able to use any medical tools in order for their, ch for their checkups to actually uh, do any, super, uh, essentially the check would be very superficial and does not provide anything conclusive. Not only that, but it relies on the patient, the patient to be truthful about their condition. And thank you. Any questions? Thank you.
just step right in front of the um, back of the board. Thanks. Uh, Shujan, we're going to start with you and work your way across. Oh, sorry. We're going from the top. First question, Srijan, if you had another team member, what perspective or limitation could they have reached that would have made a useful contribution to your project? If we had another team member, we would have researched more about the culture implications and how culture affects the cost of healthcare. And this can be motivated by election polls and how people uh, in different cultures vote for different types of elections and how their vote is cast. And we would try to include that in our presentation. Okay, thank you. Next up, describe an argument from one of your peers' IRRs that makes you think differently about your team's solution. Um, so, can you repeat sure. Describe an argument from one of their IRRs that makes you think differently about the solution that you guys came up with. So, um, Santiago, his uh, perspective was about the government, the government, and he showed that the government spends trillions on the on healthcare. So that makes me that emphasizes the limitations of the solution that we brought out because it shows that it would require even the government to spend even more on the solution. So that could be a limiting factor and also limit support for the solution. All right, thank you. Next up. What is an example of a compelling argument from one of their reports, your peers' reports, that you decided to not use in your presentation, and then why? Uh, in Santiago, this research, we discovered that sometimes doctors attempt to uh, order more testing than is actually required due to avoid uh, cases of malpractice. And so we, we initially we were thinking of adding it in, but it didn't really fit in with what we were already talking about, so we decided to scrap it. Okay. And last up. Uh, reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one of them had the greatest impact of your understanding of the problem? Uh, I should say it would be the scenes because technology really shows that in today's world, technology is really evolving. So it makes it easier, I guess, for um, doctors to not physically be there to give you, uh, I guess, the diagnostic. But it also negative impacts you because maybe uh, you don't, there's no really physical touch or like physical use so you really know what's going on.